What's up, everybody? We're back here again, and this time around, I'm going to be showing you my Leopard Gecko's bioactive enclosure. And here is Leonotus, the Leopard Gecko's tank. This is a 40-gallon breeder, bioactive terrarium. Uh, he has only succulents in there right now, and isopods as well. Uh, I don't have any, what are they called? I don't know, those tiny bugs that people put in with the isopods. I don't have any of those. They creep me out. Pretty scary stuff. I mean, it reminds me of lice. I, I don't know. So, none of them small bugs, but I do have a ton of isopods all over the place. And he likes to go hunting, running around hunting um, later in the evening. Which is this time right now. Uh, but I, I, I just have the lights on for the purpose of this video. Usually they're off. Uh, I, I did end up turning the heat heat lamp, UV heat lamp off. Just so that uh, he doesn't get that extra light. I mean, he doesn't, you know, we don't need it for the video. And he doesn't need it right now. I mean, he only likes coming out at nighttime when it's all nice and dark. So, <laughs> uh, he's probably pretty pissed off right now he's like what the hell is happening look at him he really likes going in the water I don't have it too deep to where you know as you can see his head doesn't go underwater just his beatsies but uh, he can still get a nice soak if he wants to and he just likes exploring trying to find his prey as you can see is uh, not so much right now but Maybe here in a sec, usually his tail wags back and forth pretty rapidly as he hunts, which is pretty cool to see. Oh, a little bit of glass surf in there. But yeah, it's a pretty cool setup. I'm going to get into the details here in a sec, but first, let me show you the cave systems that I got going on. This is the first uh, cave system I'm going to show you. This is the humid hide for him no heat mat underneath just uh that uh sphagnum moss in there and i missed it every single day i usually missed his whole enclosure every day just because the succulents seem to love it they thrive really well just off the misting um on to the second one here's the next hide up in the top area of the i guess you'd call it mountain hill that leopard gecko can climb and bask in the UV rays if he wants to and heat up if need be just another place to heat up uh, up above but this is actually the cool hide um, down below I don't want it I mean because he has the humid hide as well I wanted it to kind of be in between um, the humid hide and the heat hide only because I want him to be able to explore more and kind of choose what he wants to do based off of the time of year I mean right now I'm seeing him a lot in this cool hide which means it's probably starting to heat up which it is and so probably in the middle of summer I'm gonna see him switch over that humid hide I don't know yet I haven't had him that long she's a, or not he it's a she she's actually a rescue uh, from this dude a while back just couldn't care for care for her anymore apparently it was her his daughters and his daughter was like five like just it wasn't a good situation no reptile should be kept by a, a five-year-old like they don't have the experience or the necessary knowledge to do something like that and yeah anyways this is where she tends to like to hang out the most uh, at this time of year. Uh, of course, I don't know yet, but I'm assuming she'll switch over. I really am. It's just she all throughout winter was in the heat hide, even though the whole entire room was basically the same temperature. I mean, there there's a slight increase of, uh, of heat coming through the windows, maybe. I, I'm not too sure, but... I mean, the whole room is ran, oh, ran off the AC, so I'm not too sure, but it's pretty cool to see. 
Oh, you see that tail wagon? She's on the hunt right now. <laughs> Alright, let's show you the heat hide now. So, this one, she really likes just because this is the only area that I use black um, expanding foam. I used the pond and stone. The rest of it, I just used the normal gap filler just because it was cheaper. Uh, I, and I just had this pond and stone left over from my uh, pond build video, my 300 gallon pond build. So, yeah, she's going to go in there right now, warm back up, and then I'm sure she's going to go back to exploring. So, this is the largest case system out of the three in this enclosure. Uh, basically, the whole entire area that you see on screen uh like the dirted area where it's foamed that is all explorable like that's all open um so she quite enjoys it and it's the only part that i used the black expanding foam so it's really dark in there as you can see there is a little bit of light coming through i should probably touch that up i just haven't yet i really needed to get her out of what she was in um, before when I got her in the from the previous owner so actually I added her into this she just came in a plastic tub but I just wanted to show you what she was in right before I put her in the 40 gallon breeder and I ended up taking out all of that reptile carpet because I did my research and it harbors bacteria. It's just no bueno. So I just put her in here as soon as I could. I just stopped working on it because I, I had to let it air out for quite a long time because of the volatile, the VOCs. I, I forgot what it stands for, but you need to let that pretty much air out for a couple weeks to a month. So it took me a minute to build this, but it, I think it turned out very very good let's now talk about how I built this enclosure first I applied the expanding foam in layers I waited 24 hours each layer that I put on for it to fully cure and it took me about two weeks actually to completely get all the expanding foam onto there and probably another three days to shave this all out and you know form it how I wanted to this was my first attempt so I'm sure it doesn't you know maybe look the best in some of your eyes but I think it looks amazing to me <laughs> I mean for my first time I think I did a pretty good job but in total this project just foaming and shaving you know forming probably took me about a month uh, that being said, I was doing school and all of that, so it's just I did it whenever I had free time. Next, I used quite a few bottles of silicone and a substrate mix with cocoa fiber, and I also have sphagnum moss, organic soil, quite a bit of sand, and I think that's it. That's all I added into the mixture. Uh, it turned out quite well the cocoa fiber seemed to really cover up all the foam quite well um, but how I did it is you would apply the silicone in a certain spot because you have to do it in you know chunks I guess you could say because of the drying time it, it cures pretty fast or I, I guess dries pretty fast but not completely cures uh, so you would do apply even layer and a section and put your dirt on grab a paintbrush make sure it's all even and brush off all the extra extra debris um, now you you are gonna want to leave quite a bit on just because you'll want to wait for it to cure completely before you brush it off you know entirely and you just do that throughout the whole entire enclosure it took me one day to knock it out I mean, I took breaks, of course, and did other stuff, so that's why it took me a full day, but yeah, I knocked it out in one day, so it didn't take me a couple weeks or nothing like that. I used the same substrate mixture for the bottom. Used quite a thick layer, just because I wanted to grow succulents in here. 
um, as you can see they are doing pretty good um, you can't see it in this shot right now but I'll show you here in a second but at the top they're actually blooming flowers which is just absolutely amazing to see I think it's very cool here's just a couple photos of the flowers blooming I have isopods running all throughout I didn't want to add any of those small little bugs oh, I just cannot remember the name of them for the life of me but you you reptile enthusiasts know what I'm talking about all right they creep me out man I'm just not about them at all I'm sure they're super beneficial and do a better job than the isopods but in all honesty I could care less and it's not like my leopard gecko will eat them anyway so I don't particularly need them um and if there's extra dying organic material or visible poop I'm just gonna take it out you know if there's extra stuff that I don't see that's for the isopods they can clean up that extra stuff that is not really you know, I'm not catching myself so I think it will be all right he loves going around hunting around this time of the day which is I think it's like five six o'clock in the evening uh, he he just goes around for a couple of hours wagging his tail searching in every crevice of the of his enclosure it's it's pretty cute and pretty cool to see I'm actually using a Vivo Sun heat mat and I think it's used for uh, plants but vegetation I just decided to use it for this works very very well keeps the temperature around 84 85 degrees which is exactly what I want um, and that's always even during the winter time it I mean it sometimes dropped down to 83 but then it would work itself back up throughout the day so I think it works very very well for what I need to use it for and it heats up the whole entire large heat cave system that I have down there for him uh, so yeah I think it works very well so for the heat mat probe I actually just ran it through the top and I don't know if you can see all that sphagnum moss right there is kind of covering it up oh you can kind of see it at the bottom there and then I poked a hole through the foam and I put it all the way in to the cave system all the way at the top so he might be able to reach it but it is up in the air so I'm sure he just leaves it alone but yeah it it seems to be accurate I've stuck my uh, temperature stick down in there and it gave me back the same reading my guy loves to climb as you can see in these next few clips I'm gonna show you so that's why I added all these long branches going all throughout the uh, enclosure he loves them all right I had to slow this down because I just noticed this I posted this on TikTok and she, did you see that she teleported here i'll slow it down for you watch this boom this isn't an edit that's for real her hunting which is just crazy to me the middle dark brown branches that you see those are actually fake but all the rest of the wood is real to mopani wood and also have some cholo wood up in that corner next by the humid hide and he just absolutely loves crawling around on them he he'll sit on them and just chillax for like half the day like it, it's super cute to see and plus the isopods of course they need their wood and that's basically the whole entire enclosure right there explained i mean if you guys have any questions drop them in the comments and i'll gladly answer them you know in the comment section or just make a whole other video about it so let me know if you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.